Uh, once you see that coming down in the way it does, then I timed it compared to the controlled demolition, which you see on the right. I was basically cooked. I mean, the, uh, the way that thing falls down is not just because it was hit by a jet. It actually wasn't even hit by a jet. So, you know, there, there's something very strange about this building step and the way it comes down. Now, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this tonight. In past discussions, I have done so, but um, I want to move on to some new material. And if you would like to, you know, I'd like to point out that the 9-11 Commission didn't even mention the collapse of Building 7. I'd like to tell you how in the FEMA report, but we just don't have time to go into that. Now, the FEMA report uh, said that our best hypothesis, which was fires plus some damage, has only, for Building 7 now, our best hypothesis has only a low <coughs> probability of occurrence. We had time to go into that. The uh, NIST report on Building 7 is way overdue. It's supposed to be out this year, and when it comes out, you see, they, they commissioned another company to do it. So when, what they asked this other company to do was to look only at floors 8 and 46. This is a 47-story building with subfloors. And so they basically asked them to put blinders on as they considered the class of building stuff. Rather disappointing to uh, us scientists and engineers. Many of us now are writing in this uh, Journal of 9-11 Studies. So for those of you who would like to get a good introduction to 9-11, I highly recommend this journal. It has, uh, I believe, the best peer-reviewed papers the most. We have over 30 papers now in the journal. Mine is in there, why indeed, with the, the PC building is completely collapsed. Here's some of the other authors you know, who, who you'll find in the uh, journal. There are three physicists now published in this uh, Journal of 911 Studies. Professor Griscom is a fellow of the American Physical Society. I was greatly relieved when he uh, joined the effort to talk about 9-11. Uh, Dr. Jenkins, you see there. Frank Leggy is in Australia. Uh, and Joseph Joseph Furmich has written a very nice paper outlining um, 42 different events related to 9-11 and comparing the, uh, the comparing uh, LIHOP, as you know, uh, let it happen on purpose, but LIHOP with the official conspiracy theory that 19 hijackers were able to pull this job. It compares those three theories against the events. Very well written paper. And uh, uh, James Burley and Greg Roberts are here. You guys are new here. Stand up. Here's Greg. So, 
you probably have to sit there. That's the little ladder. Okay, so if you look then at this video, you'll see this is from Japanese TV. This shows the orange uh, material flowing out. Do it again. Uh, the South Tower. This is a view that uh, just came out recently. That obviously was taken on by You see that orange material, very distinctive, and you see the white ash floating away. See it one more there. See? Unmistakable, large quantities of this uh, material. And uh, that's what we want to talk about. What is that orange flowing material? Let's see if this will come back now. Sometimes it's a little tricky because I have to go out to get it. Here we are. I think we're back. Yeah. Okay, we'll see another view of this now. Um, this isn't quite as steady. This is an amateur photographer uh, trying to capture this view of this material. See the white ash flowing away again. And uh, again, large quantities of this material. Okay, that's probably enough of that. So I talked about this in my original paper, which came out in November of 2005. NIST uh, responded in a way. Now we asked to sit down with NIST, I and a couple others, uh, and they declined. And then we said, well, you choose the place and the venue, and we'll come, and we just want to sit down and talk about these questions that we had. They responded that a change in venue or time will not change our response. So that's unfortunate, but we do have a little bit of dialogue going on in that they finally issued a fact sheet. And uh, see, I said this can't possibly be aluminum flowing out of there because aluminum is silvery. And here's what, that's what they initially said in their final report. And they talked about this flowing orange material. And they said, well, it's probably the airplanes, the jets, in this case, the, in the South Tower, the jet melted. And here's what they said as they now in August of last year as they respond. This concluded that the source of the molten material was aluminum alloys from the aircraft. These are known to melt between 475 Celsius and 640, depending on the particular alloy. And this is an important point now. Well below the expected temperatures, about a thousand degrees Celsius in the vicinity of the fire. So you could, and that's true, you could melt uh, aluminum. Of course, uh, they didn't point out one thing, and that is the color orange already tells us uh, about the temperature. There's a correlation there. 